So friends, I am in Charleston, South Carolina. Where that car just turned and went to the left right there is King Street. And we are standing in front of the Francis Marion Hotel, which has been around a long time. And directly across the street, we're going to go talk about some history. But first, we're just going to look inside. If you come here, this is a nice place to stay. It has a lot of history. Elvis Presley did stay at this hotel, as well as many other famous people and dignitaries. It is a staple in South Carolina, Charleston. But across the street, there's another example of a hotel. So this is a a place. There's a little lounge here. Then it goes on up to the ballrooms. Just a beautiful place. Really nice. You see they're having all these different things, weddings, all that good stuff. Tons of them. It says, Welcome, Francis Marion. Such a splendid building in tribute to Charleston's progress. And here it says, good luck to Francis Marion, the Hotel of Charleston, joining the people of Charleston, and welcoming the open of the Francis Marion today. The new Charleston Hotel. So by 56, Elvis was making enough money that he stayed at the best of the best. And this would have been one of them. So right across the street from here is Marion, is Francis Park. Let's see this marker down here. It's Marion Square, named in honor of General Francis Marion. At the time of the revolution, the town gate stood near this spot across what is now King Street, originally the highway into Charlestown and formerly called the Broad Path. And you see it says Charlestown, not Charleston. In 1780, these gates were enclosed in the Hornwork. The post of honoring in the city's land defenses extended from river to river and known as the Lines. The tobacco inspection warehouse is established for the inspection and storage of tobacco before exportation stood north of the square between Tobacco and Hudson Street. The buildings now on that site include the arsenal, erected for the Municipal Guard after the attempted slave uprising of 1822, and subsequently named the Citadel. In 1842, they were occupied in the South Carolina Military Academy. In 1937, these buildings were converted into county offices. Seated in 1833 to the field officers of the 4th Brigade, the square was and still is held as a public mall and a parade ground. It has long been known as the Citadel Green, and this was actually put up in 1941. So that was at the beginning of World War II. So this is a park right across the street from the hotel, by the same name. So this says, Remnant of Horn Work, May 1780, the Siege of Charleston. I don't know what that means exactly, but it is a a rock kind of made out of shell, like they find at Texas Gulf, is what they call it, in North Carolina. Hmm. I'll look to see if I can figure out what this means. And then that building over there looks kind of like a castle. It mentioned the Citadel. So I think that must be part of it.
All right, I'm going to talk about what the hornwort was, but first I wanted to show you this photo. This is the spring of 1865 photograph taken by a Union soldier during the Civil War. That rock has been there that long, and that building has been there that long. Look, they would look old then. What the hornwort was was a fortified entrance to the city. This shape that you see right here is an example of the shape of it. The hornwort was built in the latter part of a local campaign of fortification construction that commenced in 1755 and ended in 1759. Initially motivated by the fear of a French attack during what Americans called the French and Indian War and the British called the Seven Years War, 1756-1763. That fortification campaign ended when South Carolina authorities realized that most of the French Army and Navy were just too busy defending Canada to consider launching an invasion of the southern colonies. This hornwork was actually built as a fortified gateway intended to defend the northern approach of the town and control the flow of traffic along Broadpath, now King Street, which was then the only road leading in and out of Charleston. It was the third such structure in the history of colonial Charleston and replaced earlier fortified gates that once stood at the intersection of Broad and Meeting Streets. That was 1704-1730. And at the intersection of King and Market Street, 1745-1750. Unlike the earlier structures, which were connected to a system of adjacent walls and moats, situated immediately adjacent to the town, the hornwork was a freestanding, detached work, the gateway of which was nearly 700 yards or approximately 600 meters north of town boundary at the time of its construction. The distance was intended to provide space for future civilian expansion and for the later offensive works that would eventually flank the lonely hornwork. This piece of stone is the only thing left from it. And the hornwork was actually a European invention, 17th and 18th century, that was brought to America. The idea. This looks like there used to be train tracks through here and they've covered them up with these stones. We'll go over here and see what this is. There's little windows. That would have been for guns to stick out. So far, go now. Dates of historical interest. 1822, first constructed as a two-storied armory and fortress as a result of the Denmark versus slave uprising. 1842, occupied by the first corps of cadets of the Military College of South Carolina, 20 students. Third floor added to the building, 1853. Occupied by federal troops, 1865, which was 157 years ago. Returned to the Military College of South Carolina and occupied by the Corps of 185 Cadets, 1882. Major fire destroying much of the building, 1890. 1910, the Citadel adopted as the official name of the Military College of South Carolina, fourth floor added to facility. 1922, last Citadel class graduated on this site. College moved to its present location on the Ashley River. That was 100 years ago. This is 2020. 1938, major remodeling. 1970, extensive exterior restoration and interior renovation completed. So this was a fortress indeed, as I mentioned. Those are holes for guns. You can see them there. And they added floors to this thing. There's holes up there. At least that's what it looks like. Hmm. And it says no entry. So I wonder what this is now. Clearly somebody's in there. It was like a hotel almost. Hmm. I think it's the back of this hotel up here. Interesting. This is down the side. You can 
Let's see up in there. I see people in there. Huh. Interesting. I don't know what this is. A lot of people don't know that Otis on the Andy Griffith Show puts in elevators. His company does anyway. So now we're on the other side of the building and we see what it is. It is Embassy Suites. So I was right. The Citadel is now a hotel. I want you to look. Who knew? So friends, I think that is the coolest thing. Instead of tearing this building down, Embassy Suites by Hilton took the building, restored it. It used to look like this, and now it looks like this. Pretty, pretty amazing. So if you go to Charleston, definitely try to stay at the Citadel. Looks like a really nice place to stay. Just another little piece of history that has been saved by a hotel, nonetheless. Wonderful. Thanks so much for watching, and Go to Charleston, friends. It is full of history. One last thing I forgot to mention. They say it's haunted. Yes, they do. So make sure when you're watching the Weekly Spa Guy, you subscribe. You give me a big thumbs up if you like the video. And watch the Weekly Spa Guy, friends. Thank you.